The issue of race. Vice President Biden, you say that President Trump's response to the violence in Charlottesville three years ago when he talked about very fine people on both sides was what directly led you to launch this run for president. Oh, yeah, sure. President Trump, you have often said that you believe you have done more for black Americans than any president with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln. My question for the two of you is why should voters trust you rather than your opponent to deal with the race issues facing this country over the next four years? Vice President Biden, you go first. Actually, I'm gonna pause it. Biden wants to blame Trump for one thing he said that wasn't that wouldn't have been that big of a deal if the Democrats hadn't been like, oh my gosh, he's a racist, trust me. He said that there were fine people that wanted to be on the right wing side. Oh my gosh. But I think the moment that Donald Trump really started pushing it is when he spoke out against the Black Lives Matters protesters so violently almost. I mean, it was like Donald Trump was trying to inspire hate. He was, in tr he was trying to inspire a group of people. The, I, I call them identity Christians. Uh, a lot of people would call them far right, radical, violent Christians. Like, I don't know what people would call them. They're Christians who believe in violence, who are racist. They have been around for a long time. The Bible condones slavery. The Bible says it's okay. And so um, Donald Trump wants to appeal to these people that are racist. And he thinks that's okay. Um, so he has encouraged them to commit violence through his tweets. <clears throat> so the big problem is that... Um, Biden wants to call Donald Trump racist for everything he does, and then it kind of takes away what Biden's saying. And I don't think Donald Trump necessarily is a person that is super racist. Um, I think he is someone who... He's someone that will use racist people and knows that people are racist. And um, I, what I don't think Donald Trump realized is that some of these groups of people um, have a long history of violence and they have a long history of terrorism and when you encourage them to violence, they will be violent. And that's why when people started hurting protesters, Donald Trump should have said, hey guys, stop, but he didn't. He said, my protesters, are, my, my side is not doing anything. The only people that are doing anything is Antifa, except no one knows who Antifa is, except Antifa was a very small group of people and now Donald Trump has turned it into a very large group of people that aren't all terrorists. But even before, they weren't terrorists, they were arsonists. And by lying about what they were, by saying, these people are terrorists, in order to help the Department of Justice, um, because once you're a terrorist, you don't have any rights, um, by doing that, Donald Trump made Antifa a million times stronger. And so, all right, let's hear, hear what Joe Biden has to say. It's about equity and equality. It's about decency. It's about the Constitution. And we have never walked away from trying to require, require equity for everyone, equality for the whole of America. But we've never accomplished it. But we've never walked away from it like he has done. It is true. The reason I got in the race is when those people, close your eyes, remember what those people look like coming out of the fields carrying torches, their veins bulging, spewing, just spewing anti-Semitic bile and accompanied by the Ku Klux Klan. A young woman got killed. And they asked the president what he thought. He said there were very fine people on both sides. No president has ever finish said anything statement. like that. Finish it, it is his now, two second, minutes, sir. Second point I'd make to you is that when Floyd was killed, when Mr. Floyd was killed, there was a peaceful protest in front of the White House. What did he do? He came out of his bunker, had the military do, use tear gas on him so he could walk across to a church and hold up a Bible. And then what happened after that? The bishop of that very church said that it was. I feel like the only thing you can talk about is what's on the news. And apparently you watch the news too much, but continue complaining about 
Donald Trump and not focusing on the actual issue at hand. All he, all he ever wants to do is divide people, not okay. unite people at all. This is a president who has used everything as a dog whistle to try to generate racist hatred, racist division. This is a man who, in fact, you talk about helping African-Americans. One in 1,000 African-Americans has been killed because of the coronavirus. And if he doesn't do something quickly, by the end of the year, one in 500 will have been killed. One in 500 African-Americans. This man, this man is the, is the savior of African-Americans. This man cares at all. This man's done virtually nothing. Look, the fact is that you have to look at what he talks about. You have to look at what he did. And what he did has been disastrous for the African-American community. So, Pre President Trump, you have two minutes. Why should Americans right. trust you over your opponent to deal with racism? He did a crime bill, 1994, where you call them super predators, African-Americans, the super predators. And they've never no, forgotten it. They've never forgotten it, Joe. No, no, sir. It's his two minutes. So you did that, and they call you a super predator. And I'm letting people out of jail now that you have treated the African-American population community. You have treated the black community about as bad as anybody in this country. You did the 1990. And that's why, if you look at the polls, I'm doing better than any Republican has done in a long time because they saw what you did. You call them super predators and you've called them worse than that because you look back at your testimony over the years, you've called them a lot worse than that. As far as the church is concerned and as far as the generals are concerned, we just got the support of 200 mil 250 military leaders and generals, total support. Law enforcement, almost every law enforcement group in the United States. I have Florida, I have Texas, I have Ohio, I have every, excuse me, Portland. The sheriff just came out today and he said, I support President Trump, I don't think you have any law enforcement. You can't even say the word law enforcement, because if you say those words, you're going to lose all of your radical left supporters. And why aren't you saying those words, Joe? Why don't you say the words law enforcement? Because you know what? If they called us in Portland, we pause. OK. The law enforcement you're talking about that endorses you believes in the system that creates Black Lives Matter. In other words, they believe in the drug war that has cops doing no-knock warrants on Breonna Taylor and killing her and, oh, oops, didn't mean to acc accidentally just completely fill your house with bullets. So all I'm saying is, I mean, I, I understand that Breonna Taylor, whoever said that someone started shooting, but I also understand that you shouldn't get murdered because you do drugs. And even if Breonna Taylor wasn't a dealer, or even if she was a dealer, then she shouldn't have to worry about getting murdered because she does drugs. Because the reality is that most people who do drugs sell drugs. And we can all talk about how, oh, trust me, black people like me. I know this black person. They endorse me. Well, who cares about who endorsed who? What matters to me is who's going to actually help black people. Who's going to keep black people from getting murdered? Me. Because I'm the one that's going to change the law. No one wants to talk about changing the law. I'm the only person. Everyone else goes, no, we'll, we'll train cops better. We'll teach cops to be nicer. We'll, t we'll teach cops not to shoot fast. Well, why don't we teach cops a different law to follow that will make them not mess with people as much? would put out that fire in a half an hour, but they won't do it because they're run by radical left Democrats. If you look at Chicago, if you look at any place you want to look, Seattle, they heard we were coming in the following day and they put up their hands and we got back Seattle. Minneapolis, we got it back, Joe, because we believe in law and order, but you don't. The top 10 cities and just about the top 40 cities are run by Democrats, and in many cases, radical left. And they've got you wrapped around their finger, Joe, to a point where you don't want to say anything about law and order. And I'll tell you what, the people of this country want and demand law and order, and you're afraid to even say it. All right. I want, to, I want to return to the question of race. Vice President Biden, after the grand jury in the Breonna Taylor case, decided not to charge any of the police with homicide, you said it raises the question, quote, whether justice could be equally applied in America. Do you believe 
that there is a separate but unequal system of justice for blacks in this country? Yes, there is. There's, system, there's systemic injustice in this country, in education, in work, and in, in, in law enforcement, and in the, in the way in which it's enforced. But look, the vast majority of police officers are good, decent, honorable men and women. They risk their lives every day to take care of us. But there are some bad apples. And when they occur, when they find them, they have to be sorted out. They have to be held accountable. They have to be held accountable. And what I'm going to do as President of the United States is call, they have to be held accountable. And what I'm going to do as President of the United States is call a, a, together an entire group of people at the White House, well, everything from the civil rights groups to the police officers, the police chiefs, and we're going to work this out. We're going to work this out so we change the way in which we have more transparency in when these things happen. These cops aren't happy to see what happened to, to, to George Floyd. These co cops aren't happy to see what happened to Breonna Taylor. Most don't like it. But we have to have a system where people are held accountable. When, and by the way, violence in response is never appropriate. Never appropriate. Peaceful protest is. Violence is never appropriate. All right, what is peaceful President, protest? When they run through the middle President, of the town Trump, and burn down President your stores Trump, and kill people President all over Trump, the place? That and you is say not peaceful, peaceful protest. President President Trump, no, it's I'm not, not asking. But you say it is. President I Trump. Okay, when they kill people all over the place? No, what happened is Antifa specifically targeted Minnesota and burnt the shit out of it. They burnt down a lot of police stations. And... So there were people that weren't peaceful protesters amongst the peaceful protesters. And so now all protesters are people that want to burn down cities. But my understanding is that Portland doesn't even get burnt down every night. Portland had consecutive nights of protest and it has a lot of graffiti and stuff like that, which there's graffiti everywhere anyways. I, or in some cities there are. If you go to Louisiana, there are areas that there's graffiti everywhere, and that's just how life is. So people do graffiti. So you can blame that on the protest, but I mean, let's 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 keep going. I'd like to continue with yes, the issue ahead, of race. Please. I promise we're going to get to the issue of law and order please. in a moment. Fine. This month, your administration uh, directed federal agencies to end racial sensitivity training that addresses white privilege or critical race theory. Why did you decide? to do that, to end racial sensitivity training? And do you believe that there is systemic racism in this country, sir? I ended it because it's racist. I ended it because a lot of people were complaining that they were asked to do things that were absolutely insane, that it was a radical uh, revolution that was taking place in our military, uh, in our schools, all over the place. And you know it, and so does what, everybody what, what else. Radical, and he would know. What is oh, radical totally about racist. racial sensitivity training. Sir. If you were a certain person, you had no status in life. It was sort of a reversal. And if you look at the people, we were paying people hundreds of thousands of dollars to teach very bad ideas and frankly, very sick ideas. And, and really, they were teaching people to hate our country. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow that to happen. We have to go back to the core values of this country. They were teaching people that our country is a horrible place, it's a racist place, and they were teaching people to hate our country. And I'm no not going to allow that to happen. V Vice President Biden? Nobody's doing that. He's just, he's oh, the you, racist. You, you just don't know. Here's the deal. I, I know a lot more about you this. Don't than Let him finish. The fact is that there is racial insensitivity. People have to be made aware of what other people feel like, what, what insults them, what is demeaning to them. It's important that people know they don't want to. Many people don't want to hurt other people's feelings, but it's, it makes a big difference. It makes a gigantic difference in the way a child is able to grow up and have a, self, a sense of self-esteem. It's a little bit like how this guy and, and his friends look down on so many people. They look down their nose on people like Irish Catholics like me and grew up in Scranton. They look down on people who don't have money. They look down on people who are of a different faith. They look down on people who are a different color. In fact, we're all Americans. The only way we're going to bring this country together is bring every. From what I'm hearing, Trump's saying that the racial sensitive, sensitivity training is teaching radical ideas that he doesn't agree with. And you can have racial sensitivity training without teaching people what some people, without teaching people theories that some people would disagree with. And 
in my experience, there are a lot of theories going around that are just commonly accepted. Like um, Dulce, Sto Dulce Sloan from The Daily Show sent me a message recently on Twitter, and she said that um, the, the legal system is set up to persecute to, to hurt black people. Like it's set up specifically to be against black people, which the legal system is actually specifically set up to help black people. That's why we have affirmative action and that's why we have laws for the workplace that um, require certain quotas of people uh, from, from minority or from other races uh, when you're, for, for people that are hiring. Like there are very serious penalties if you um, don't include people from other races. So uh, all I'm saying is clearly Dulce Sloan is wrong, but Dulce Sloan is the smartest person ever. She's like a writer for The Daily Show. She knows what she's talking about. Everyone agrees with Dulce Sloan's opinion, even though it's completely wrong. Because the legal system, in my opinion, is set up to help cops. It's to protect cops. But this whole Black Lives Matter thing makes it so that no one is focused on the real problem, which is that the law is set up to help cops, and it's and it's written so that cops can be held accountable, and it's and it and it's written so that cops have to be in more dangerous situations than they should be. The, the, the law makes a lot more people criminals than they should be. Drug addicts should not be criminals. But let's not talk about that. Let's just tell everyone that the whole legal system is set up to persecute black people. And some people, like probably Joe Biden, thinks that should be in the, in the racial awareness course. Or we're going we're gonna to teach cops that in racial sensitivity training. Some people don't, and I'm one of those people. Americans, the only way we're going to bring this country together is bring everybody together. There's nothing we cannot do if we do it together. We can take this on and we can defeat racism Vice in America. President, I mean, President Trump, sir. During the Obama-Biden administration, there was tremendous division. There was hatred. You look at uh, Ferguson. You look at you go to very many places. Look at Oakland. Look what happened in Oakland. Look what happened in Baltimore. Look what happened. Frankly, it was more violent than what I'm even seeing now. Oh, my but Lord. the reason this is, is that the Democrats Absolutely that run these cities ridiculous. don't want to talk like you about law and order. Violent and you crime. still haven't mentioned. Violent Are you crime. in favor of law and order? I'm in favor of law. You follow Are you in favor of law and order? Go yes, ahead. Yes, I'm in You asked a question, let him finish. Law and order. Law and order. Let him answer. Law and order with justice where people get treated fairly. Okay. And the fact of the matter is violent crime went down 17 percent, 15 percent in our administration. All right. It's gone up on when, his watch. Went down he, much more. He, he had, all right, we're, he we're now, you're right. During your administration, the FBI's budget also doubled. What by so it, that your the FBI's budget increased by like what thirty billion thirty billion dollars. So, as far as law and order goes, Biden over here definitely wants to spend money on it, and so. Mr. President, you're going to be Mr. President, every record in the Mr. Book. President, you're going to be very happy because we're now going to talk about law and places order. We had trouble. We're Democratic-run cities. That's exactly my Democratic question. There has been a dramatic. In what I was trying to say is, during the Biden administration or during the Obama Biden administration, the FBI got a massive increase in funding, which means that black people were persecuted more. I'm, I'm sorry that most people don't realize that. But when the FBI gets more money, that means they have more more money to spy on people for random stuff. And so all I'm saying is Biden clearly, um, with his federal budget that, well, specifically Obama put forward, um, he was definitely not good for black people. Dramatic increase in homicides in America this summer particularly, and you often blame that on Democratic mayors and Democratic governors, but in fact there have been equivalent spikes in Republican-led cities like Tulsa and Fort Worth. So the question is, is this really a party issue? I think it's a party issue. You can bring in a couple of examples, but if you look at Chicago, what's going on in Chicago, where uh, 53 people were shot and eight died shot. If you look at New York, where it's going up like nobody's ever seen anything, the numbers are going up 100, 150, 200 percent. Uh, crime. It's, it is cities. crazy what's going on. Republic. And he doesn't want to say law and order because he can't, because he'll lose his radical left supporters. And once he does that, it's over with. But if he ever got to run this country 
and they ran it the way he would want to run it. We would have we would our suburbs would be gone. By suburbs. the way, our suburbs would be gone, and you would see problems like you've he never would seen. know right. a suburb unless he took a wrong turn. Oh, I know suburbs. He would not. So much I was better. raised. Go ahead. I would, Wait a minute. I was oh raised God. in the suburbs. This is not 1950. All these dog whistles and racism don't work anymore. Suburbs are by and large integrated. There are as many people today driving their kids to soccer practice and or to uh, black and white and Hispanic in the same car as there have been any time in, in the past. What's, what really is a threat to the suburbs and their safety is his failure to deal with COVID. They're dying in the suburbs. His failure to deal with the environment. They're being flooded. They're being burned out because okay. his refusal to do anything. That's why the suburbs are in trouble. I, I do want to talk about this issue of law and order, though. And in the joint recommendation that came from the Biden-Bernie Sanders task force, you talked about, quote, reimagining policing. Yeah. First of all, what does reimagining policing mean? And do you support? It means. Uh, uh, let me, if I might finish the question. What does reimagining policing mean? And do you support the Black Lives Matter uh, call for, uh, for community control of policing? Look. What I support is the police having the opportunity to deal with the problems they face. And I'm, not, I'm totally opposed to defunding the police officers. As a matter of fact, police, local police, the only one defunding in his budget calls for a $400 million cut in local law enforcement assistance. They need more assistance. They need when they show up for a 9-11 call to have someone with them as a psychologist or psychiatrist to keep them from having to use force and be able to talk people down. We have to have community policing like we had before where the officers get to know the people in the communities. That's when crime went down. What you said is that you, the police need to have the tools necessary for the crime for the, for the problems that they face but you haven't talked about changing the problems and that's because you're not for changing the problems it's because it's not good politically but it's also probably because uh, a lot of your friends make a lot of money off spying on people I'm talking about the FBI and other federal agencies so um, Biden doesn't actually want to change things. Went down. It didn't go up. It went down. And so we have to be engaged. That's not what they're talking about, that's, Chris. That's well, not what that, they're talking about. He's talking exactly, about defunding the that, police. That is not true. He doesn't have any what, law what you, support. Look, he has no law enforcement That's support. not true. Almost that's nothing. Not, that, look, oh, really, who do you have? Name one group that supports you. Name one group that came out and supported you. Go look, ahead. Look, think. We have time. We don't have time to do no, anything. No, no. All right, sir. <laughs> Right. Name folks, one law enforcement folks. group that came well, I think, out and I supported think, gentlemen, you. Gentlemen, I think I'm going to take back the there moderator's are, role. I don't think there And I want to get to another subject, which is the issue of protests in many cities that have turned violent. In Portland, Oregon especially, we had a, more than 100 straight days of protests, which I think you would agree, you talk about peaceful protests, many of those turned We're into riots. Mr. Vice President, you say that people who commit crimes should be held accountable. The question I have, though, is as the Democratic nominee, and earlier tonight you said that you are the Democratic Party right now, have you ever called the Democratic mayor of Portland or the Democratic governor of Oregon and said, hey, you've got to stop this, bring in the National Guard, do whatever it takes, but you stop the days and months of violence in Portland? I don't hold public office now. I am a former vice president. I've made it clear I've made it clear in my public statements that the violence should be prosecuted. It should be prosecuted. And anyone who commits it but should be But you've never called for the people, uh, the, the leader, that. excuse me, sir. You have never called for the leaders in Portland and in Oregon to call and bring they, in the National Guard and knock well, off 100 days of riots. They can, in fact, take care of it if he just stay out of the way. Oh, Look here. Oh, really? Here, oh, really? Here's but the thing. That, no, I that, sent sorry, in the no, wait, U.S. Marshals to get the killer no, of that, a young man in the middle of the street. They shot him. Uh, and for three Ms. days, President Trump, Trump says, Portland President wouldn't Trump, do anything. I had to send in the U.S. Marshals. They Trump, took care of business. Go ahead, and, sir. And by the way. The reason you had to send in the U.S. Marshals is because you pissed off everyone so bad that now it's turned into a freaking war where you're sitting there going, all right, guys, every, all my friends with guns, get ready to go counter-protest. And you're encouraging counter-protesters and you're encouraging people that are protesters because 
you piss people off so bad. It's like you're you were trying to set up the situation right now where this whole conversation that you're having during the presidential campaign is about race and you know the majority of people are white and you know that some people are sick of protesters spreading COVID-19 because they're sick of pe people freaking marching in the streets when they're staying at home and trying to protect their families. They can't protect their families because everyone wants to freaking protest and spread this disease. By the way, you know, his own former spokesperson said, you know, riots and chaos and violence help his cause. That's what this is all about. I don't know who said that. I do. Who? I who? think it, Kellyanne Conway. I don't think she said that. She said that. And so here's the all right. But here's the point. The I point is that that's what he is keeps trying to rile everything up. He doesn't want to calm things down. Instead of going in and talking to people and saying, let's get everybody together, figure out how to deal with this. What's he do? He just pours gasoline in the fire constantly and every single solitary. OK, time. And, and to end this button up this segment, I'm going to give you a minute to answer, sir. You have repeatedly well, criticized. Wait, I have to answer his statement. No, you have his repeatedly. Statement. Wait, you have repeat, no, you've been talking. You back made and a forth. statement. I'm asking you. I would if, love no, to you know, end it. Sir, I would love to I, end it. I, you know, if you want to switch seats. We, we could, could very quickly. We could do that, but I'd I'm not. I'd send the National I, Guard, it would be over. There'd be no problem. Okay. But they but don't want to accept the National Guard. You have repeatedly we, criticized the, the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist right. groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, you you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right wing. Who would you like me to condemn? White proud proud supremacists and right wing. Proud boys. Stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right his wing own, problem. This own is, own is a left wing. This said, is a left wing no, no, problem. White supremacists. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not militia. That's what oh, his no, an idea. FBI, his okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, we're then gonna, you know what? No, no, that we're, done, we're done, sir. I'm sure everyone wants to know my stance on this. I'm definitely not a white nationalist. And if there's anything I'm not, it's a white nationalist, and that's why I believe in America so much. Um, because I think that America's great because of the way that all these different races come together and contribute what they're good at. Um, a white supremacist, it depends on how you define white supremacist. Most people think of white supremacists as terrible people. Um, I think of white supremacist meaning that I think the people that should be supreme are white, and I think that my people are white, and I think we founded this planet, and I think that we created modern society, and we created modern science, and I cr think we basically invented everything, and so therefore I think we should be supreme because I think that we're the smartest, but me being a white supremacist is not me being a Joe Biden white supremacist. Me being a white supremacist is me being someone that believes that very specific white people should be in charge because we're smarter. Um, but a lot of the time, I think that people from other races are better than white people. So um, I, I, I don't think, I don't judge people by the color of their skin. When I say I'm a white supremacist, I'm not a very, I'm not a super white person supremacist. I don't think it's about the color of your skin, but I think that we tend to be either tan or white because we tend to be Anglo-Saxon. Um, so, um, I looked up the Proud Boys and it sounds like they're a very small group of people who are proud to be white and they like fighting and that's why the left doesn't like them because they go to protests and they punch people and stuff like that. Um, I obviously am very for protecting protesters because that's what the First Amendment says is that you have a right to protest and if you have a right to protest, you have a right to be safe while you're protesting. So. Um, I would definitely be against any group, left or right, that goes to protests of another group and tries to fight them personally. I wouldn't ever be a counter-protester. Um, I would prefer to be a protester who runs my own protest.
We're everybody moving on to the next. We're moving on to the next. Everybody in your administration. That's not an idea. Everybody Antifa in your administration tells you the truth is a, has a bad idea. Can I tell you what? You have no Antifa, ideas that are fine. Antifa is a dangerous, radical group. All right, gentlemen, group. we're now moving on to the Trump and, and Biden records. Them. They'll overthrow you. When a president, I'm going to ask a question.